Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. This week we've got some very exciting discoveries to talk about, as yet another Spinosaur has been found in England, but this time it's a lot bigger. First up in the news for this week is a paper reporting on the first definite evidence of abelisaurid remains from the famous Bahariya formation of Egypt, the formation from which Spinosaurus aegypticus and Carcharodontosaurus are known. The material is a single, well-preserved neck vertebra from a medium-sized member of the abelisaurids, and shares many similarities with vertebrae from animals such as Majungasaurus and Carnotaurus. Not only is it the first confirmed abelisaurid in the formation, but also the oldest record of the group as a whole in Egypt showing how widespread these dinosaurs were in North Africa at this time in Earth's history, as well as adding to the remarkable diversity of large carnivorous dinosaurs already known from the formation. And we've got more dinosaur news this week, with the description of what might be the biggest theropod dinosaur ever recorded from Europe, an incredibly exciting prospect. The material comes from the Isle of Wight, the so-called dinosaur island off the southern coast of the UK where so many remarkable discoveries have been made and comprises vertebrae, bits of the hip, ribs, and fragments of limb bones. Unfortunately, they're not diagnostic enough for a new species to be named yet, but it's clear that they've come from a Spinosaur. Amazingly, they were actually found in a different, slightly younger formation to the formation from which most other dinosaur material on the island originates, suggesting that these bones almost certainly represent something new. Known for now as the White Rock Spinosaurid, the authors write how the dimensions of these bones are on the same scale as the holotype of Spinosaurus itself, and are much larger than any other European theropods, potentially making this animal the biggest theropod known from the continent so far. A phylogenetic analysis was run for this dinosaur, but it's currently unclear whether it should be placed as an early diverging member of the Spinosauridae family as a whole, or if it might actually be a Spinosaurine, the subgrouping that Spinosaurus belongs to. If the latter is the case, then it would also be the first record of a Spinosaurine from Britain, another very exciting development. Hopefully more material with some diagnostic traits turn up soon, and we can get an official name for this remarkable giant Spinosaur. Finally, there's also been a very interesting study published in which researchers have sampled the tusk of a male American Mastodon individual to investigate whereabouts it lived during its life. Looking at oxygen and strontium isotopes in the tusk, they found that when the individual was younger it had a restricted range, but then after he presumably left the matriarchal herd at around 12 years old, the young male moved further from his home range. Then, during adulthood, his movement increased further, with a clear seasonal structure. Seemingly, a summer-only mating ground existed for mastodons in northeast Indiana. Indeed, this individual was killed after he received a deadly blow to his skull, most likely from a rival male's tusk, and he died in this region of Indiana, supporting the idea of a preferred summer habitat and mating area for these animals. It's a fascinating study that reveals a lot of similarities to living elephants, and tells us a lot more about the life habits of these remarkable mammals. Well, that's it from me for this week. I hope you enjoyed finding out what's been going on in the world of paleontology news this week, and thanks for watching. 